I also have this, and I might pass it around. We have them, we had them prepared as a little manual. And so it's in, tab in table form so that teachers know exactly what students need to be doing, what they need to be doing, what the leadership will be doing. Yay! <laughs> Here we go. So I looked at each area, so we looked at each area. And I have broken it up into terms, but as we're moving along now, that seems a little irrelevant, that may change. But we've looked at each part. We've also talked about the tasks and activities. So <coughs> within this manual, teachers can go through and find, and I think we discussed it before, that it may have been Lakeside that produced it, but it actually has a description of the activity. So teachers were able to pull that out and use those within their work program. So it was very easy for them to, to, um, to use it. I'll flip through. <laughs> oh, where am I? Okay. It goes through each one, obviously. Um, I might just reading aloud, paraphrasing. So, with quite some detail, the teachers are able to look through that and refer to it. And then here we have the tables. I've also here incorporated a week implemented, so teachers can keep a record of what they're using and maybe what weeks they're using it in too. Okay. Luckily, that worked. <laughs> Okay, teachers at PE have now embedded the effective literacy practices in their yearly, their term, and their weekly planning documents. They regularly discuss and share ideas for learning experiences to support student learning. The English Committee have spent money on, on providing the literacy resources we need really good fiction and non fiction books that the children will be stimulated by. And so far, I can say that the high reliability procedures have proven to have motivated, engaged and improved student performance in literacy. We already have evidence of our students having automatised these strategies. They're beginning to put these procedures into practice whenever they're introduced to new information. On March 12th this year, John Munro was invited to visit our school to model his strategies to our staff and provide feedback on our implementation of the seven high reliability procedures so far. The day was organised to provide teachers working within their teams with an opportunity to observe a group of students working with the high reliability procedures with John, with a specific focus on paraphrasing because we found that was the area that we felt we needed a little bit more support. So after this modelled session, and putting John on the spot, um, teachers were able to discuss any concerns, any implications of the strategies with John, and he was more than happy to answer all of those. Uh, teachers were most impressed with how engaged our students were while working with John and they were keen to have a go themselves, but just not in front of John <laughs> on the day. <laughs> so what does our literacy block look like? Well in the Prep to 2 area our primary focus is on developing students oral language, their phonemic awareness and phonological knowledge to support them to learn to read, and providing them with the strategies and skills they need to decode and comprehend texts. Our literacy pro program follows the whole part whole model where there's opportunity for teachers in reading to work with two teaching groups in a session and in writing with one teaching group and they share and review the learning at the end of each session. Students in the Prep to 2 are engaged in activities to support, develop and improve their reading, writing and speaking and listening skills. We've incorporated the HRLTPs into our teaching, especially our whole class focus. Teachers and students are now very familiar with the procedures and terminology and are beginning to initiate the use of these strategies before, during and after reading. In the three to six area, our focus is on reading to learn, reading to gain new knowledge and build on prior knowledge. The whole part whole model is also used within the literacy block. The HRLTPs play an even more crucial role during the whole class focus and in small teaching groups. Reciprocal teaching is also incorporated in the three to six literacy programs. Some students are now quite capable of running these small groups without the guidance of a teacher. It's fantastic. Um, they are using the strategies to comprehend, comprehend texts they are reading. It's important to note that not only have we embarked on embedding the high reliability strategies into our curriculum, but through the AIZ Literacy PDs with Lorraine Edwards, we've also focused on developing and improving our teaching and assessment of fluency, as we recognise that was a key component of comprehension. 
Through our professional learning sessions and allocated PLTs, we've also worked with staff to demonstrate how to effectively use the writing continuum to moderate and assess students' performance in writing. Since the implementation of the high reliability procedures within our curriculum program, teachers along with learning leaders have developed and produced teaching resources to support one another. Various learning and assessment tools were created by the learning leaders to support the teachers and documents and templates and reference materials from the AOZ Phase 1 PDs were also shared with our staff. More resources and performers continue to be developed to improve our teaching and learning in classrooms across the school today. Implementing these effective literacy practices has certainly changed and improved our teacher practices. <coughs> Teachers at PE are keen to improve and build on their skills and are keen to invite colleagues to be observed. PLTs have provided staff with a great opportunity to share and discuss effective practices in literacy. We hope to continue building our teachers' capacity for using effective instructional practices and we look forward to seeing the student's performance continue to improve. Thank you. To me, the, the phonological work, I think, for next year, for 2010, I'd really like to see that being targeted, certainly throughout most of your schools, because I think it's critical. If, if the students haven't got the phonological knowledge in place and automatised, they're going to be held back in being able to do things with words, being able to teach themselves new words. And when they encounter new words in texts that they haven't read before, they're not going to be able to deal with them so well. Uh, we, the, the issue of fluency in reading aloud is critical. The whole idea of prosody, of getting the rhythm in the sentence and being able to uh, communicate effectively and again use, uh, use language to work for them is going to depend on their, uh, on their phonological and their phonemic knowledge. Uh, we talked in our sessions about the importance of teaching the students how to handle the schwa, how to be aware of the unstressed vowel, and how, how we need to really uh, work on that. And, and the whiteboards, uh, I think, are interesting. And it, it may well be, Lena, that different schools look at actually targeting different aspects. If we are talking about now moving the actions, in, 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 instead of having just as blanket actions, going further. And uh, the, the, the whiteboards <coughs> really, really can help uh, in, in a range of ways. I, I, was t uh, I, was, I needed to teach to a, a grade two class um, summarising at, at Tulu Arm a few weeks ago and uh, we used the, the big book, uh, The Life Story of the Butterfly. A lot of you will know that big book where the, where the leaves on page one and two are laid on the, on the underside of the leaf and uh, the, the, um, the, the, butterf the caterpillars hatch in the eggs and in order to have these grade two children summarise the text, uh, I didn't have a whiteboard, but I, I, I was able to project the text onto a, um, well, an, an ordinary whiteboard. <coughs> and uh, the children had difficulty summarising the first paragraph. And we read the first sentence, and we, I got the kids to visualise it. And I said, what will I draw? And they said, oh, you'll draw a little egg with a caterpillar in it. And we did that. And we read the second sentence. Then we read <coughs> the third sentence. I said, what picture will I draw for that? What do you imagine? And the grade two kids said, oh, well, you'll draw an egg with a caterpillar in it. Well, they could see immediately that the first sentence and the third sentence were saying the same thing. They said, oh, they're saying the same thing because we drew the same picture. So helping the children uh, learn how to do those things and uh, actually seeing me on, on the whiteboard actually cross out sentences because they weren't necessary in the summary really helped the kids to know what actions to do when they had the text in their head they had to actually cross out sentences or move one or two words from this sentence up to that sentence so that would then become the summary so uh, w w in, see, in, in some of these cases we're now at a point of moving away from the specific raw actions like learning how to put your foot on the clutch to knowing how to do it gently so you can, you know, drive up a hill, do a handbrake, start up a hill. That's really where we are with some of the strategies. And I think we need to keep all that. I'm sorry, this isn't in response to what no, you said. No. I've got nothing. No, it's okay. <laughs> 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 so, too good. <laughs>
Okay, can you please thank you. Um, thank thank you. you guys.